Today marks the 56th anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., a day of deep reflection and sorrow, remembered vividly by me and all of us who experienced that profound loss that day. Just hours before his tragic death, King seemed to foreshadow the event that would shock the world. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Now, as we proceed forward with today's top stories, we delve into a situation that has ignited global outrage and debate. Chef Jose Andres, in a definitive stance, has publicly declared that the bombing of a World Central Kitchen convoy in Gaza by the Israeli Defense Forces, or the IDF, was a deliberate act. While an official investigation is yet to confirm the intent behind the tragic event, Andreas' assertion adds a layer of complexity and urgency to the call for accountability and transparency. Number one, Chef Jose Andres claims WCK bombing was deliberate. Celebrity chef Jose Andres told Reuters that the Israeli attack, which killed seven of his World Central Kitchen aid workers in Gaza, had targeted them systematically, car by car. What I know is that we were targeted deliberately, nonstop, until everybody was dead in this convoy. This happened over more than 1.5, 1.8 kilometers. So this was not use a bad luck situation where, oops, uh, we dropped the bomb in the wrong place or, or no, this was over 1.5, 1.8 kilometers with a very defined humanitarian convoy that had signs in the top, in the roof. That cannot be the role of uh, an army. That cannot be the role of an army that has hundreds of drones above Gaza in any single moment. The humanitarians and civilians should never be paying the consequences of war. This is a basic principle of humanity. At the, at the time, this looks like it's not a war against terrorism anymore. Seems this is a war against humanity itself. Number two, White House expresses outrage and continues support for Israel. The National Security Council's John Kirby conveyed the White House's outrage but confirmed continued U.S. support for Israel's self-defense amid caution to await results from Israel's investigation into the strike. We've, uh, we've been very uh, clear about um, our feelings over, over this particular strike and our expectations of, of the Israelis. Number three. Netanyahu under pressure amid international outcry. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces increasing challenges from both the international community, outraged over civilian deaths in Gaza, and domestically, where calls for early elections highlight growing discontent. Number four, World Central Kitchen demands independent investigation. Following the deadly strike, World Central Kitchen has halted its operations in Gaza and called for an independent investigation into the incident, challenging Israel's and the U.S.'s narrative that the strike wasn't deliberate. Number five, legal professionals in the U.K. urge halt on arms sales to Israel. Over 600 lawyers and retired judges have called on the British government to suspend arms sales to Israel, citing violations of international law amid the ongoing conflict in Gaza. Number six, Iran and proxies denounce Israel and U.S. Leaders from Iran and its allied militia groups have united in a televised denouncement of Israel and the U.S. signaling continued support for Palestinian resistance amid the Gaza conflict. Number seven, U.S. plans for Gaza appear unaffected by aid workers' deaths. Despite the tragic killing of aid workers, the U.S. plans to construct a pier in Gaza for aid delivery and will proceed as planned. About the potential danger to U.S. troops supplying aid to Gazans, John Kirby, the United States National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications, said this. Uh, no illusion uh, about the fact that Gaza is a war zone. And force protection of our troops, which will not be entering Gaza, will be first and foremost in the president's mind as well as our military leaders to make sure that they can uh, operate that pier, assemble it and operate it in a safe way. But believe me, uh, we're, we're well aware uh, Gaza is a, is a war zone. In fact, fa that it is a war zone is, again, what makes it so challenging to get the humanitarian aid to people in need. Thank you for joining today's News Roundup. 
For more insights and updates, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and look over here for other of our roundups and in-depth analysis on these stories and other important global events. And stay tuned, stay informed with us as we explore this fascinating world's stories unfolding before us. And I will see you tomorrow.